Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Yurabbil Alamin, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursalin, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man tabi'ahum bi ihsan ila yawmideen. My dear respected brothers and uh, brothers and sisters online as well, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakat, and welcome uh, back to our Tafsir class. I hope that you all had a very good vacation, inshallah, and that we are all ready to Continue to explore in our journey and understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book, the Holy Quran. And uh, in case you were, um, uh, you're new to the class, we had reached uh, chapter 43. So we're beginning with chapter number 44, which is at dukhan So we will start, inshallah. I know that some of the brothers here may still be praying, but we have our brothers and sisters who are online as well. So we will not like to keep them back. And of course, we have the time for the uh, Isha Salah is early now. So we want to uh, get a, a head on, inshallah. So, Hawudu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. So this is, I said, Surah Dukhan, which is chapter number 44. It contains 50, 59 verses in it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins this first verse by saying, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Hamim wal kitab al mubin. So Allah begins with Hamim, which is the huruf al muqatta'ad, the letters that are unknown to us, the disjointed letters, right? Uh, these are the letters which have a meaning which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows, but we have not been given their meaning, all right? But Allah begins many of the surahs with, ha with different letters of the Holy Quran, and this one begins with Hamim. The next verse, verse number two, Allah says, Wal kitab al mubin. Allah says, by the clear book. By the clear book. Wal kitab, by the book which is al mubin, clear. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is swearing here by the Quran. By the Quran, which is the book that makes everything clear and distinct. Nothing is, you know, uh, on, uh, nothing is difficult to understand. Nothing is difficult to, to come to terms with. When we have the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down to us as a revelation. So Allah swears now by the book where he begins by, Wal Kitab al Mubin by the clear book, the clear Quran. Allah says in verse number three, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatim mubarakatin. Inna kunna mungirin. Allah says, Inna certainly anzalnahu. We have sent it, we have revealed it. Fi laylatim mubarakatin. In the night which is Blessed, the blessed night. Very interesting. Allah says we have sent it down in the blessed night. What is the meaning of the blessed night? Right? And Laylatin Mubarakatin. So there are different companions of the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have given different opinions about this. For example, one of the commentators of the Quran, Ikrama, he says that this refers to the 15th night of Sha'ban, which is the Laylatin Mubarakatin, the 15th night of Sha'ban. As you know, Sha'ban is a month that precedes the month of Ramadan. And the middle night of the month of Sha'ban, known as the 15th night, is the night in which Allah says, Inna anzalna hu. The who here refers to the Holy Quran. Allah says, Inna anzalna hu, meaning we have sent it, meaning we have sent the Quran down on this blessed night, referring to the night of the 15th of Sha'ban, according to Ikrema and according to other of the scholars. And Ikrema says, right, that all matters, all matters pertaining to the year ahead are going to be decreed on this night. All the matters pertaining to the year ahead. The names of those who will be alive for the year ahead will be in this night. 
and the names of those who will die throughout that year will be given in this night. And those even who are going to perform Hajj, they it will be determined, it will be sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the angels on this night. Now, many of the other scholars, however, have said that this night refers to Laylatul Qadr, the night of power, which is the night in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan. Right? As Qatadar and says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it regarding this, he says that we have Allah says that we have sent down it on a blessed night, referring to Laylatul Qadr. Right? Laylatul Qadr, meaning the night of power. So there are there's differences of opinion, right, with regard to this particular night. Another many of the commentators have given commentary upon this. Right? That what it means, which night it is, the 15th of Shaban, and some have said the night of Laylatul Qadr. Right? So as I said, the majority opinion, however, is it is the night of Laylatul Qadr, which is also you know the night that we call the night of power, the night in which our worship, inshallah, is worth more than 1,000 nights, 1,000 months of worship. Now, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna anzalnahu, we have sent it down, we revealed it, the Quran, what does it really mean? It means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed the entire Quran, the entire Quran on the night of power. And this revelation has come from the Lawhul Mahfuz, which is translated as the mother of all books. The Lawhul Mahfuz to the Baytul Izza, the lowest of the heavens. Therefore, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the night of power has revealed the entire Quran, brought down the entire Quran from the Lawhul Mahfuz to the Baytul Izza. And then from the Baytul Izza, is that for a period of 23 years, it was then revealed to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? This is the opinion of uh, Imam Qutubi as well and Qatara as well. All right? Now, Layla, the, there are different names as well which are, are used for this night. Right? Here, Allah SWT calls it Laylatun, Laylatun Mubarakatun, the blessed night. It is also called Laylatul Bara'a, the night of Laylatul Bara'a, the night of forgiveness. It is also called Laylatul Sak, Laylatul Sak, the night of the document of the book, because the book, the Quran, is like a document, a book, right, that has been revealed, and also called Laylatul Qadr. I mean, what Laylatul Qadr is, the night of power. All right, so it has been described as Laylatul Mubaraka. The blessed night, since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down blessings, rewards, and good things on this night. Right? Very interestingly as well, according to some of the traditions, right, um, not only the Quran has been revealed on in the month of Ramadan, but other scriptures sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were also revealed. In, in, in this month, in a hadith narrated by Wathila bin Asqar, and he says that the Prophet وسلم, said that the scriptures of Ibrahim السلام, were revealed in the first night of Ramadan. The scriptures of Ibrahim السلام, were revealed in the first night of Ramadan. The Torah was revealed after six nights of Ramadan. And the Zabur, the Psalms, was revealed after 12 nights of Ramadan had passed. And the Injil, the Gospel, was revealed after 18 nights of Ramadan had passed. Right? And the Quran in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan, according to this hadith, when 24 nights of Ramadan had passed. Now, of course, you may ask the question, what Ramadan? in these times when these books were being revealed. Because Ramadan, as we know, was one of the months that the Prophet sent us a fast. But it would have meant the ninth month that Allah subhanahu wa would have decided as the... as the... Oh, sorry. The, the ninth... The, the, so somebody has on their... 
their mic yeah. so they can probably just mute their um their, their computer inshallah so that we'll be getting a feedback here you will have been in the month of Ramadan according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even though the people themselves would not have recognized it as a month of fasting at that time. Right? It would have been the ninth month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have revealed because the 12 months have been existing for, for from the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decided inshallah. Alright? So, the hotel, um, just a message that somebody who is has not muted let me just see who that is. Eh? If we can ask somebody, um, Mr. Aoki, to please mute his phone, inshallah. So we're getting a uh, feedback here, inshallah. Mr. Aoki, inshallah. I don't know who is that, no? Okay, okay. I kind of, I kind of, I'm afraid. Allah says, Inna kunna munzirin. That certainly we always warn, we always give always send warnings, munzirin, meaning warnings against the evil. Meaning the Quran was a warning against evil as well. So are you able uh, to mute your phone? I can't come out anymore. All right. So Allah says in the next verse, "Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim." On that night, every wisdom has been ordained. Right. The 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 word. Yufuraku means comes from the verb faraka means to separate or to distinguish. It is on that night that every wisdom was ordained, everything was dis determined and destined. Allah says, Amran by a command min indina from us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that everything destined will be given to the angels on that night. Inna kunna mursileen. And certainly we have always sent messengers. We have always sent messengers. So a very important topic is being brought up here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, according to Abdullah bin Abbas, Allah decrees the matters of the worldly life Allah decrees the matters of the worldly life that will occur until the forthcoming year on this night, Laylatul Qadr. He decrees matters relating to life, to death, and to sustenance. So, according to one of the scholars, what does it really mean Allah destines, decrees that matters? Is it that Allah SWT is now making up these matters? No. Really, it means that Allah on this night, which we established could be the 15th of Sha'ban, but according to the majority of the scholars, is the night of Laylatul Qadr, Laylatul Mubarakah, Laylatul Saq, that this night, Laylatul Bara'a, this night, the night in the last 10 nights of the month of Ramadan, is the night in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs the angels about what things are going to happen. Not that these decisions are going to be made, decreed by Allah on that night. According to Abdullah bin Abbas the information of all matters is written right, or copied from the Ummul Kitab, the Lawhul Mahfu, the sacred tablets on the night of Laylatul Qadr regarding what will occur in the coming year from death life, sustenance, rainfall, etc., and even about Hajj. Even about Hajj. It is written, for example, so and so will perform Hajj, and so and so will perform Hajj. So here now is a very important point that we as believers must understand. On this night, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends to the angels the instructions for the next year, who's going to live? 
Who's going to die? How much rain will fall? What is your sustenance? Everything is sent. Not that it is decreed by Allah, very important point, on that night. It is decreed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala according to some hadith 50,000 years before, written in the love of Mahfud. But sent to the angels, given the instructions to the angels on that particular night. Why this is important for us to understand is that as human beings, when things happen to us, we can become happy or we become sad. And sometimes we become, we lose hope. Sometimes we want to feel displeasure with Allah. Sometimes we want to ask ourselves, you know, what have I done? You know, and why, what, what did I not do on the night of Laylat al-Qadr that caused this to happen to me? What this is telling us is that whatever happens has already been written. Has already been written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And once it has happened, there's nothing we can do about it. So it doesn't mean that we should become hopeless about that. That, you know, if I had done this, I would have done, that would have happened. If I had not done this, that would have happened. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had already written. And it was only on this night that it was given instruction on the angels. On the other hand, this understanding or misunderstanding can lead a person to become neglectful, isn't it? A person may say, well, if everything is already written 50,000 years ago, then it doesn't matter what I do, whatever I do, it doesn't matter. But then if that is the case, then where is the accountability? Why is there accountability? Why is there heaven and hell? Why do we have to answer? Because what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed for us is not known to us. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us or punish us or forgive us upon the decisions we make. Because we do not know what Allah has decreed. Right? So we must always act in accordance to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us, what we have learned to be correct and stay away from what is wrong. We must never say, for example, let me give you an example. We cannot say, well, I feel that I need to, to commit this sin, whether it is a sin of fornication or a sin of adultery or a stealing, stealing from somebody. And well, if I get through with it, then that was written by Allah. It was written that I would steal. It was written that I would fornicate. It was written. Therefore, there is no problem with that. Allah had written it so. We cannot adopt that attitude. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though it has already been known to Allah and decreed by Allah that this is what you are going to do, you would have committed fornication or you would have committed adultery or you would have stolen. This Knowledge of Allah, by Allah, does not influence your decision-making. Your decision-making is based upon your own knowledge, your own taqwa, your own iman, your own faith, your own you know, consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what Allah will bless you for. That is what Allah will give you jannah for. That is what Allah may punish you for. And therefore, while on the one hand, we can use this verse to console ourselves. And when something has happened, this is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was Allah's this destiny for us. We had no, we can't, it could not have changed. Allah decided that. But on the other hand, if we do something, we have to also remember that we do not know what Allah decreed would have happened, and therefore we are accountable for what, what we have done. And we may be punished or taken the task for it. Inshallah, we must always try to do the best so we are blessed for it as well, inshallah. Right? It's a very important point that we must we must remember. You know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows what we are going to do, but we are going to be blessed for what good we do. So on the one hand, this is a verse where we can control ourselves. This was the decision of Allah. It doesn't make sense. As you know, the saying goes, crying over spilt milk. When the milk spill. That was the last decision. But if you could prevent it from spilling, you have to try first, isn't it? 
And if it still spills, then that Allah's decision. Right? But if it doesn't spill, then Alhamdulillah, Allah has, you know, not, not allowed it to spill as well. Right? So that's, that's something that I wanted to make sure that we understand as well, inshallah. All right? Many, many scholars have written about this. Right? Um, and Allah says, as a command from us, as this is the last part of the verse, we are ever sending. This is connected to where Allah SWT says that he decrees all matters on the night of power. This verse explains that all of the matters which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed are based solely upon his, 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 his decision and his command. And nothing is written by the angels Right from the birth to the death or the sustenance of a man, except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded it. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always sending messengers, such as the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and messengers before with the understanding of how we must decide to do what is right and to do what is wrong. Right? Allah continues in the next verse, verse number seven. Verse number six. Why does Allah SWT send these messages, these messengers? Allah says, Rahmatam mir Rabbik, as a rahma and as a mercy from your Lord. As a rahma and as a mercy from your Lord. Innahu huwa sami'ul alim. He, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, certainly he is all hearing and he is all knowing. Right? As a mercy, some of the scholars say that a mercy here refers to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning that the verse says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent rahmatan. When Allah says, inna kunna mursileen, we are always sending messengers. We are ever sending, you know, messengers. Rahmatan min rabbik, as a mercy from your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam according to Abdullah bin Abbas. He says that as a mercy from your Lord, that is because of Allah's compassion to his creation and as a favor to them that he sends messengers. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he's all hearer and he's all knower because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see and wants to and knows and sees how we accept the message that he has sent, how we accept the messenger that he has sent, how we accept the Quran that he has sent. Right? Allah says in the next verse now, verse number eight, number seven, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Rabbi samawati wal ard. He is the Rabb and the Lord of the heavens and the earth. Wa ma bainahuma. And he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and all that is between them. Right? Right, all that is between the heavens and the earth. In kuntum mu'kinin, right? If it is that you kuntum mu'kinin, you have certainly, you certainly have faith. If you really believe, if you really understand, and you have faith with certainty, right? This verse explains that those unbelievers, those disbelievers will not accept the Qur'an. It is only if it is you are certainly a believer and you have faith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Rabbu samawati wal ard, then you will believe in that which he has sent uh, to you and to all of mankind. Allah says in verse number eight, La ilaha illa hu, that there is none worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yuhyi wa yumit. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gives life and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he causes death. Right? Rabbukum, and this is a message he sent to the disbelievers as well. Rabbukum, he is your Rabb. Wa Rabbu abaikum al awwalin, And he is the Rabb of the forefathers, the former fathers, because they used to always say that we are going to follow or what our forefathers are doing. But who is the Lord of the forefathers? It is none except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? 
And Allah SWT says about the disbelievers in verse number 9, بَلْ هُمْ فِي شَكٍ يَلْعَبُونَ Nay, they however, they are in shak, they are in doubt, يَلْعَبُونَ Playfully, amusing themselves. They are not understanding the serious matter that this is, but they are in doubt and they are they are they are they are playing in doubt, right? Meaning that they have no faith, no belief in what the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has given to them, but they make fun, they make fun, Yal Abun, they make fun, they are playing, they are amusing themselves. In what the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam has revealed, has has been what has been revealed to him, and what he has told them, and Allah subhanahu wa taala is taking note of that. That bal nay, no matter what has been set down, hum fi shakin yal abun that they are in amusement and in doubt over that what Allah subhanahu wa taala has sent. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala sends a warning. He sends a warning. Allah says. فَارْتَقِبْ Then wait and watch. Or, or, right? Wait and watch. فَارْتَقِبْ Right? Rakaba means to watch. فَارْتَقِبْ يَوْمَ تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ Wait. Wait. Watch. يَوْمْ For that day. تَأْتِ السَّمَاءُ When it will come down from the sky. For the day when the sky will become Bidukhan with cloud. It will become smoky. Not cloud, sorry, smoke. It will become veiled in haze and clouds. Mubin, visible cloud, visible smoke. Right? Wait until, until that day when we will bring the sky to become cloudy and smoky. And this is the word Dukhan that the whole surah takes its name from. Right? Which means smoke. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being told that he should is told is telling the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa that he should tell them, Fartaqib, then wait. You're in doubt, you're playful, you're, you're amusing yourself with what Allah has revealed to the Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You're making fun of the comments, then wait until that day. Yawma ta'atis samai when the sky, the heavens will bring. Mubin, clear smoke, or visible smoke, right? Visible smoke. And what will that smoke do? Allah says in verse number 11, Yagshannas, it will envelop and it will cover the people. It will cover the people. Hada adabun alim. This will is it is it is it painful. Hada, this is a Adabun alim, a painful torment. Right? So, what is this Dukhan? There is differences of opinion about this Dukhan, this smoke. Regarding this smoke, right, one of the great companions of the Prophet Muhammad, وسلم, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he stated that when the Quraysh continue to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the Quraysh continue to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he supplicated against them. He made dua against them. And he said, O oh Allah, increase your harshness upon the tribe of Mudhar. Upon the tribe of Mudhar. And make their years upon them like the years of Yusuf alayhi salam. You know, the years of Yusuf alayhi salam, there were seven years of of, of drought and then seven years of ease. So in other words, making dua that the seven years of drought and difficulty and famine come upon them. Such that, such a, 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 a hardship came upon them that they began to eat bones and the dead animals. The animals would die out of thirst and hunger and they would eat the dead animals because nothing else to be found, nothing else to, to, to eat. And that a man among them would speak to his brother, right? 
but he would hear his voice, but he would not be able to see him on account of the widespread smoke that filled the atmosphere between the sky and the earth. Right? Fill the atmosphere between the 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 the, the, the um the eye the um the sky and the earth, and he, the, Abdullah bin Masood said that this is these are the, that there are five signs of the day of judgment which have already gone, which are the smoke meaning this dukhan, room meaning the 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 when when they um when when Constantinople was 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 um was overtaken, was was overtaken. The moon, meaning the splitting of the moon, the seizing and al-lizam, al right? So um, I think al-lizam refers to one of the battles that will have taken place. So he is saying this, right? However, right, um, there are differences of opinion, as I said, right? Abdullah bin Abbas, what Yelah al says, that the sign of the smoke it, as mentioned in this verse, is a sign that has not yet come. That has not yet come. Right? It will occur before the day of judgment and will fill the atmosphere between the earth and the sky. So here is a difference of opinion. Abdullah bin Masood was allowed to saying that this sign has already gone. Right? But Abdullah bin Abbas was allowed to said this sign of the smoke, the Dukhan, is still to come. And it will be at a time when the whole earth will become filled with this smoke. And that when a believer is touched with this smoke, it will be like if he gets a cold, like if he gets uh, the flu, right? It will be like if he gets the flu. But when the disbeliever, right, when he the smoke touches him, he will be like, you know, unable to breathe, like asthma, like Sahara dust, <laughs> like Sahara dust today. Some people can't, you know, they can't breathe properly with Sahara dust. It will be like, Difficulty, they will have difficulty in breathing, and it will be like if they're intoxicated, like they can't think straight, like the you know moving on because of this of this smoke. The smoke will fill their stomachs and come out of their bodies, right? So this is also the, the other opinion, right? Now, Abdullah bin Masood was firm in his opinion eh, that this you know um this this, this because. There is a you know a, a narration by one of the uh, companions, Udaifa bin Asid al Ghifari. He said that you know the so this is this is with regard to the 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 the, the, the belief of Abdullah bin Abbas that the sign has not come yet, and he said that the Messenger sallallahu alaihi looked out to us from a womb while we were discussing about the day of judgment, and then he said the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. And this is a hadith that is found in Sahih Muslim that the hour will not come until you see 10 signs. Until you see 10 signs. The rising of the sun from the west, the dukhan, the smoke, the beast, the emergence of Yajuj and Majuj, the appearance of Isa, the Dajjal, the three cases of the earth collapsing, one in the east, one in the west, and one in the Arabian Peninsula, and the fire which will emerge from the bottom of Eden and will drive the people. Right, so he is saying that you know these are signs of the these are one of this is one of the ten signs that still has to come based on this hadith where he heard the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam say this, right? But Abdullah bin Masood as I said, he referred to this smoke as a punishment that already came, right? Now. How it is that we know that Abdullah bin Mas'ud, you know, um, takes this opinion is that Hafiz ibn Jarir, right, and Hafiz ibn Kathir as well mentions in, in, in Tafsir ibn Kathir that one of the Tabi'in, his name was Masuruk, he says that we went to the Masjid, uh, the Masjid at Kufa, the Masjid at Kufa, and there was a person. Who was reciting to his companions about this day when the sky will bring forth a visible smoke. And this person in the masjid, in this majlis, he asked them, Do you know what this means? And this man, and 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 you know, then the man told them that it will, you know, it, it will be the smoke that comes on the day of judgment. 
right? The smoke that comes on the day of judgment. It will take away the sight and the hearing of the hypocrites. But for the believers, it will be like having a cold, meaning it is one of the signs that still has to come before the day of judgment. Now that person, Masruq, right? Alhamdulillah, he went to Abdullah bin Mas'ud when he heard this person saying this in the Masjid at Kufa. So then he said, we came to Abdullah bin Mas'ud and told him about that. He was lying down and he became alarmed when he heard that. And he said that Allah certainly said to his messenger, say, no wage do I ask of you for this, nor am I one of the pretenders. A verse of the Quran from chapter 38, verse 86, he recited. And then he said, verily, it is a part of knowledge that when a man does not know something, he should say, Allah knows best. And then he says to them, I will narrate to you about that, about the smoke. In other words, he's saying to Masruk, what am I talking about? How am I doing nothing? What is he saying? I will tell you, this is Abdul bin Mas'ud now, this is why we know this is his, this is his opinion. And he says to them, that when the Quraysh did not respond to Islam and they grew stubborn towards the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he supplicated against them and of which they would have years of the years of Yusuf Alaihi Salam. On account of this hardship and starvation struck them to the extent that they ate bones and the dead meat. This is exactly what we had said before. Right? So in other words, he is saying that this is something that happened already. So that is why we have two different opinions. All right, I see that we're already kind of running out of time. So let me continue, inshallah. All right, so this is where they have two different opinions about, about this, right? Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further... Oh, just a minute. Eh? Um, cancel this here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says about this in, 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 in the next verse, that when the people come, when they get this now, so we can take this as happening, as has as happening... According to Abdullah bin Abbas, at the time when almost the Day of Judgment is there and the major signs are being seen, that they will say, Rabbanak shif anna al adab. Oh, our Lord, remove, remove, right? Remove anna from us the punishment. Inna mu'minun, we are going to certainly believe. In other words, when they are faced with this punishment, they are going to become believers. Right? They are going to be believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ana lahum dhikra. How is it that for them now it comes as a reminder, a dhikra? وَقَدْ جَاءَهُمْ رُسُولٌ When a messenger had already come to them, رُسُولٌ mubin, A clear messenger had already come to them. You never believed. But now when the smoke is affecting you, you want to say, remove this punishment. Remove this punishment. We are going to become believers. Right? It means how will they take a lesson and now accept Islam? At this time, when the punishment is descending upon them, right? When already signs and miracles had come to them, right? And then Allah SWT says, Thumma tawallaw. But when those signs and messengers and those miracles came to them, Thumma tawallaw, they turned away. They didn't accept it, right? They turned away for him. And they said, Mu'allamun. They said, Mu'allamun. In other words, nothing was revealed to him, you know. He was just being taught this knowledge and giving it back to us. He is just one who is Mu'allamun. Mu'allamun. Alima means to teach. And he, they're saying about the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is just a mu'allam and he is somebody who was taught. He was given a lesson and he gave us that lesson. And they said to him, Mu'allam majnoon. He was, he was also a madman. He was a madman. Right? He was a madman. So what they mean by this? 
it means that some of them, right, said according to the the, the Mufassirin, right, um, Imam Fakhri Nawazi said the unbelievers of Makkah had two opinions regarding the Holy Quran being recited by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One, some of them believe that he learned the Quran from other people, other people taught, right? And that he was taught by a non-Arab slave from the Banu Thaqif. Hence, they call him Mu'allamun, somebody who's being taught. In other words, it wasn't revealed to him, right? But he was just being taught by somebody else. And the other stated that he was mad and that it was a jinn that inspired him. And when the jinn possessed him, then he was able to recite the verses of the Quran. And there are many, many verses of the Quran which refute what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which refute these, you know, these, uh, these uh, accusations by the disbelievers, right? But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse number 15, Allah says, Inna kashiful adab. Indeed, we will remove the punishment, right? We will remove the punishment qalilan for a period of time. Innakum aidun. Verily, you are going to return to your disbelief. Verily, when we remove the punishment, because you see, your belief. Your faith is not based on your is not based on iman and a conviction. Your belief is based on punishment. Right? Punishment. When you're feeling the pinch, then you're begging, we will become believers. But when Allah removes the punishment, right? Imam Razi says that Allah notifies the Prophet, وسلم, right? Allah mentions he will remove, remove the punishment from them for a short while. However, they will renege on their promise and they will go back to the shirk that they were upon. Right? Imam Razi, he says that the that the, that Allah tells the Prophet that the unbelievers will not fulfill their promise, but they will go back to shirk. Their conduct was that whenever they were in a difficult situation and they were suffering, they would earnestly turn to Allah. However, when the difficulties were removed, they turned back to kufr and turned back to shirk and turn back to the ways of their, for, their forefathers, right? They turn back to the ways of their forefathers, right? But then, while explaining the city, now this verse as well is also used by Abdullah bin Mas'ud, right? When Because Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he takes the position that this happened already, yeah? Abdullah bin Abbas and other, other um, scholars say it didn't happen as yet, right? But Abdullah bin Mas'ud now uses this verse as well, Right, he says that Abdullah bin Mas'ud said that when the Prophet وسلم, made dua against the Quraysh and Allah accepted his supplication, matters became very bad for them until they had to they had to eat this dead meat. Then when they started to suffer, some of them came to the Prophet وسلم, and pleaded with him to supplicate to Allah to remove the punishment. Upon this request, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam supplicated to Allah and the rains began to fall. Right? So Abdullah bin Masood is saying, this verse is also now referring not to what will happen according to the other, the other Mufassirin, or the other companions, that this is going to happen at that time, but it happened at the time in the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they came and they asked, right, that, you know, asked for, for an ease, that the Prophet ﷺ supplicated to, to Allah, the rains began to fall, the drought ended, and then the Quraysh went back again. Went back again, right? They didn't believe it. They broke the promise which they made, and they remained firmly upon the shirk. That is why Allah says, you know, verily we shall remove the torment for a while. Verily you, the unbelievers, are going to return back to your disbelief. SubhanAllah. Intriguing, isn't it? Eh? So which is the right one? Is it that it happened in time of the Quraysh? Or is it will happen before the day of judgment? Or is it that it may happen twice? Maybe both of them, you know, maybe it happened to the tribe of Musa in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Maybe it will happen for all of mankind as one of the signs on the day of judgment. Allah alone knows best. MashaAllah. So this is where we reach. You know, verse um, 15, we will stop here today, inshallah, because I know the Adhan is just five minutes. And um, so this is Surah Dukhan. And inshallah, Surah Dukhan has... 
It is a Makan Surah, as I said, only 59 verses in it, but it talks about these kind of topics about having faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having taqwa in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also it talks about the punishment of, uh, you know, Fir'aun that we'll be coming up to as well, that he had to face because of his disbelief as well, inshallah. So, inshallah, um, for those of you who are online, we will stop here today, inshallah. We have stopped at verse 15. And of course, those of you who are here, well, we do have our regular refreshments, inshallah. We ask you to stay to receive those refreshments, inshallah. So we'll continue from next week, inshallah. At the same time. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum. One of the surahs that is recommended for you, man.